Hello, everyone. Good evening. Okay, so we'll start with the by generating good intention motivation. First, starting with the breath, watching the breath mindfully for a few moments. Then we can try to generate a good intention <clears throat> by thinking by us coming together and listening, engaging in discussions, and all of these become cause and conditions to actualize all the realization of the lumbrim, all the path within our mind stream. And having cultivated the path and all the realizations, may we be able to be more help and benefit, more and more help, more and more benefit to all sentient beings while on the path. And finally, it becomes cause and condition to obtain fully awakened state of the world and be most benefit and help to each and every sense and things. Okay. <clears throat> I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the path, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By the merits I create through listening to the Dharma, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. Sangye chodong zogi zonam ha, sangju kodo dane yapso che, dagi shushe gibe sonam ki, lula tenze sangye doba hash. Sangye chodong zogi zonam ha, sangju kodo dane. <clears throat> so we have been discussing on the the stage of the path, Lamrim. And uh, we, after last week, we finished the, the, the common path of that is needed in whether you practice Sutra or whether you practice Vajrayana. You know, those are the path that is common and needed for both, both paths whatever path that you choose, whether you choose to practice just simple Sudrayana or whether you decide to, to follow the Vajrayana path, but this 
we need to have this lumbrum explained or well, the practice explained till last week is a common path you know that is required for the both path so cultivating the bochi the mind you know and then having cultivated both in the mind and engaging into the, the practice of six perfections. And then in order to generate the both in the mind, then uh, need to have the foundations and realization of the small um, middle scope practice in the path. And in order to have the realization of the middle scope, then we need to have the foundations and the realization of small scope. And so that is the way the path, the stages of the path. And so again, in particularly, you know, we have been following one particular, um, some verses from the Lama Chopa, you know, Guru Yoga by one of the great Penchen Lama, you know, Penchen Lama Yishi, by following his verses. So we have been that discussing that. And I think um, today it come to LC, 109, so is training the mind or uncommon path of Vajrayana, you know. So from here is, up to here is common path that is needed both the Sutrayana and Vajrayana, but from here then is a, a special unique practice of the Vajrayana. So that is, um, hmm. So again, <clears throat> you know, in the pra Basariana practice, there are certain um, practice technique or meditations that you don't find in Sutrayanas, you know. So, but all the practice that you find in Sutrayana should be the foundation and basic for the Vajrayana practice. But on top of that, then in Vajrayana, you find certain more, you know, uh, certain tech, certain more technique of practice meditation that you don't find in uh, Sutrayana. So, um, one of the main, uh, one of the main difference is, you know, of course, there are many, many, not difference in their contradictions, but in a difference in that certain technique practice that is explained in Vajrayana that is not being explained in Sutrayana. So in that sense, you know. Um, is that... Um, <clears throat> In Vajrayana, you know, of course, we all have this potential, like we all have these potentials um, that is explaining both Sutta and, uh, and Vajrayana. You know, we all have the potential to become enlightened, transform this unenlightened being into the enlightened being and become a Buddha, you know, and also able to transform our ordinary environment into a uh, you know, celestial mansions or enlightened environment. And we also have the potentials. So we need our own environment. So we have also potential to, mm, to transform all the <clears throat> things that we experience, ordinary things we experience into something, uh, you know, extraordinary, enlightened, everything that we use, uh, we enjoy, all the enjoyment that we enjoy, which are now, you know, kind of contaminated, but to transform into non-contaminated. And, um, and then also our activities at the moment are ordinary, but to be able to transform those also in a, you know, not ordinary, but extraordinary, enlightened activities. So we have that potential. So in Vasarayana, we take that potential, the result, 
as on the path at the moment. So even we are not Buddha now, we visualize ourselves in Buddha. So taking that potential into the path, you know. And even though environments surrounding us now is not a, you know, pure environment is in pure environment, but then again, through practice visualization, we, we purify and we visualize it as being a mandala, celestial mansion, pure, pure land. Everything that we enjoy at the moment, we visualize and transform through transformations, visualizations into something uncontaminated. You know, everything that we enjoy is not just the ordinary things, but they are enlightened wisdom, energy, or force that has been transformed into you know, those different aspects of enjoyment that we enjoy. And all the activities that we engage now, again, through visualization and transformation, we try to transform and visualize it as a enlightened, um, the activities of the enlightened beings, you know, the Buddhas, um, liberating sentient beings, purifying sentient beings, liberating them. So, you know, so that we take the path, which were not actualized, but were the potential. And we take that potential into the path and imagine ourselves being in that result path. And that is, that is one of the unique of that you find in Vasudhyana that you don't find in Sudhyana, you know, and as part of that. Um, so that is one of the difference you can say, you know. Um, hmm? So it's a kind of like, rehearsing, you know, something that you are going to do next time and you are re rehearse, what do you call, rehearsing. Yeah, re so it is kind of preparing for that, you know, preparing that through your practice, you know, that is, um, and then, you know, there is also a method, a way to transform, you know, our desired energy into something positive. Our the energy of the anger into something positive into the path, the energy of the ignorance, something into the, um, you know, path, something positive, but is as much as there is the method to do that, you know, um, as much as there is the method to transform them, but again, it's not easy to transform them unless you have the good foundations of the common path. You have a realization of emptiness, for example, which is the common path, foundation of realization of emptiness, then you can be able to transform your desired energy into something positive. Without having the realization of emptiness and trying to transform desire into a path, you can be misleading yourself. Without the understanding of emptiness or realization, trying to transform your anger into something on the path, you know, that can be again, uh, you know, um, um, deceiving yourself. And that is why the common path that we have just explained as the foundation very important you know in order to enter the vajrayana path and in order to be able to utilize all the method correctly and effectively mm. so uh, you know um in some of the Vasariana teachings and from the, it explained, you know, how by relying on desire, you kind of consume the desire. Relying on the anger, you consume the angers. Relying on the ignorance, you consume the ignorance. Supposedly that is the, supposed to be the method. So that is how you transform. They give you an example, um, there is a, some kind of bug, I don't know exactly what kind of bug it is, is supposed to come, the bugs come from the some certain kind of tree, 
you know, tree, you know, from, I guess, moss, moisture and some other things from the tree, then that kind of give birth to this um, insect. And then that insect started eating the, the tree itself, you know. And so that kind of, it gives some example like that. But again, if we don't have the foundations of the common path, then a lot of time people have misused the tantric of Vajrayana, deceiving themselves and deceiving others. You know, deceiving themselves and deceiving others as well, and can be misused in that way when you don't have the basic good foundation of uh, the, uh, you know, the common path, you know, so, so that is, um, again, we have to be very well aware to be able to transform those energy, you know, cannot transform easily unless you have those basic uh, good foundations, you know. Mm -hmm. Otherwise your desired energy turn into more intense real desire and attachments instead of being able to transform into something um, virtuous on the path, um, something meaningful, you know. Um, and same with anger and all other delusions. But in generally speaking, then that is in Tantric, there is a, uh, there is a technique to transform them when you already have the, the good foundation of the common path. Mm. So those are some of the, you know, even though there are many, many other kind of difference, but I don't, uh, um, you know, we don't need to go too much details and not to, uh, go in that, you know. Um. Mm. Okay, so, so then coming to that, then in the verse number 109, it says, then crossing the depth of the ocean of Tantra through the kindness of my vas captain, Vasudhara, I seek your blessing that I may hold my vows and commitment, the root of cities, dear to my, my life. So then in order to, you know, first, Again, you cultivate all the stages of the path, the common stage of the path that I've been just explained, you know, in the Sutra, you know, first cultivating a strong renunciations, not being attached to any of the samsaric pleasure, any of the samsaric excellence, no matter how great they are, not being attached to them, but instead being renounced, not having attached to them. And on the basis of renunciations, our own understanding of that, then we cultivate a compassion to all sentient beings by seeing, you know, as long as there's samsara, as long as they are under the presence of the delusion karma, there's no real freedom, there's no real happiness, true happiness. And through that understanding, um, realizations, feeling, then we have, uh, we develop compassion. Out of that compassion, then the wish to help them, to free them from suffering, cause of suffering. And then in order to do that, the need to achieve enlightenment ourselves, and then the wish to achieve enlightenment, the bodhicitta arises, you know. And out of that bodhicitta arises, because even though that bodhicitta mind is excellent, wonderful, but just by having bodhicitta itself, you are not going to reach enlightenment. So in order to achieve enlightenment, then one must engage in the both of paths, such as six perfection. Therefore, engage in the practice of six perfections. You know, so while you have that bodhicitta mind, while you are engaging the, the practice of six perfections, then, you know, again, cultivating even more stronger bodhicitta mind, you know, even though from your side, you know, you, you have incredible confidence or courages, you know. Even you have to be in the samsara or even in the hell realms for e ones and e ones. you are willing to do that and you have that kind of courages, you know. No rush, no rush to achieve enlightenment, 
you are okay and you have courage to be in that. But from your side, but when you think of other sentient beings, then you know, if you don't achieve enlightenment, then all sentient beings who have strong karmic connection with you, who are very dependent on you, they will remain in samsara for a long time. You know, because of your strong karmic connections, the more quicker you enlighten and you become, the more quicker you are able to help them to free from samsara and to end their sufferings because of your karmic connections and they are very dependent on you to help them. And so from that perspective, so you know, the quicker enlightenment you become, the quicker you are able to help those sentient beings. And the quicker you are able to um, reduce their pain and suffering for long durations. You know, with that understanding, then you develop strong compassions, even stronger compassion than previous. And then the, you cultivate a strong wish to achieve enlightenment quickly, not even from your side, you are you don't need to be quickly, but you need to achieve quickly for their sake in order to free them quickly. And so, and then with that driven by that strong, even stronger compassion than earlier, and then, you know, in order to achieve enlightenment quickly, then, you know, uh, then one need to engage in the Vajrayana because it has certain technique practice that can lead to enlightenment more quickly. If we can utilize them in correctly and properly, right way, you know. And then we do that, then the, you cultivate the wish to enter the Vajrayana path for that purpose. So therefore your compassion has to be even more stronger than earlier in order to enter the Bodhisattva path. I mean, uh, Vajrayana path, you know. Once we enter the both of the path, then, you know, of course, then we have to practice then, you know, practice, practice the path. In order to practice the path, you know, we need to study, learn the path. And in order to practice, in order to study, in order to learn, then we need the permission to do that. And for that, then we need to wrap in our mind through the blessings and permissions. And to do that, then we need to receive the empowerment. We need to the empowerment to really, um, to really study and practice the Vajrayana path, you know. With Sudhayana path, you don't need the empowerment to study, to learn, and to practice, but to really um, study, practice the Vajrayana path, and then you need to have the uh, the environment, uh, the empowerment, you know, um, initiations. And to receive the initiation, so initiation is kind of getting the blessings and ripening your mind, and then giving the permissions to study, practice, you know for that, to ripen your mind. And so in order to receive the initiations, then you need to not just receive initiation, you need to receive initiations from a qualified teacher's masters. Qualified teacher's masters who have the unbroken lineage of that initiations, whom they themselves have received the initiations, empowerment, where it is unbroken lineage, where there's the blessing of that all lineage, and they have received, and then themselves have, you know, practiced that practice. They not only receive the initiation, then themselves have practiced it, and have done all the requirements, you know, whatever retreat practice and including, you know, other needs and then, you know, um, and so to the teachers from whom we receive the empowerment. You know, have to have all these qualities, you know, 
who is expert in that particular practice that it that you are receiving the empowerment you know who is expert in those practice know the the rituals empowerment everything well and who practice themselves so all of that and in order to receive that then from our side if you want to receive the initiation empowerment we have to analyze the teacher well because you are creating a guru disciple relationship here when you take the empowerment with other teachings you don't have to have that you know you don't need to have that with the other teachings you can listen as a lecture or you can take someone as your teacher and receive that that is also okay you know you have that kind of choices you have those choices you know you don't have to take that person as your guru in order to receive the teachings but when we take the empowerment to receive the empowerment you have no choices you have unless you take that person as your guru and so you build up that guru disciple relationship so to in order to commit yourself and create that kind of relationship you really have to know the guru well enough whether you are ready to commit that you know mm. otherwise at the very beginning we get excited we rush and later then we find out oh the teacher was you know not so qualified or teacher was had all these kind of scandals or all these kind of controversies and then your mind start to get disturbed you know and then then you create a lot of negative karma instead of being that said you must you should have already done the research first and i see that very often people get so excited oh initiations oh this is very small very special initiations very powerful initiations oh this is you know very important and they rush and they don't even know the teachers they haven't found out anything they haven't even done any research they don't even know maybe some maybe they might have one us one people two people you know and they take and then they regret later and then sometimes they start criticizing them think bad about them say bad about them and then you create your self negative karma you know and kind of destroy that kind of spiritual relationship into something nasty something holy spiritual relation if to something kind of very nasty and so we don't want to get in that so therefore it's much more easier it's much more safe to be more more cautious and more investigating analyzing at the very beginning you know um and once we make that relationship then we we'll try to keep that relationship as pure as possible regardless of you know whatever happens you know mm. in our heart you know is 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 important otherwise the purpose of us taking initiations to our spiritual growth but instead of being spiritual growth then it can become a cause for our spiritual you know decline our spiritual decline and you know disintegrating you know and we don't want that to happen we don't want that to happen so it's important you know so anyway so once you find that kind of qualified guru teachers you know then um from that guru teachers then you receive the initiations you know initiations so 
Sometimes we are, sometimes we are, we human being are such a, you know, um, interesting creature, you know, full of contradictions, you know. Sometimes we are very cautious and even too cautious to take someone as our guru, you know, even we have known over the years or not known, sometimes we have this very cautious and we don't want to commit ourselves, we don't want to do that. Even you have known the persons for a while, or investigated for a while, and then sometimes we just rush without knowing the persons, just because you hear that that person is giving initiations or empowerment. And you totally jump into it. And sometimes I find these two kind of totally kind of contradictions. One side you are so apprehensive. And so on the other hand, you just kind of without any kind of investigating, analyzing, you just jump into it without really knowing what you are getting into it. So anyway, um, as long as you don't get in trouble, then that is okay, but you know, um, trouble in the not sense that someone's going to punish you, but you know, we just, um, you know, uh, in our spiritual practice, you know, instead of being supportive, it can be uh, harmful, you know. So anyway, so that once you take that, that is where, so then once you take initiation, then you rely on that guru that teaches, you know, your guru devotions need to be even more stronger in the, the guru devotions in the tantric of Vasarayana is even more stronger than in the sutta, you know. Mm. Mm. So then you take the initiations and then you take the commentaries on the practice, you know, how to practice and you study, learn, and you get the commentaries, the um, oral transmissions and commentaries, and then you, you get the instruction, advice, and then you need to practice. Then you need to practice. So the purpose of taking the initiation so that we can study, learn, and practice about that particular deity, about that particular practice. You know, that is the only reason why we want, you know, that should be the main reason to take the initiation. That is the initiation given for that purpose. Mm. Mm. And it is always better to ask, you know, it is always better to ask about the practice instructions from the same teacher that from whom you receive the initiations. Sometimes what happens is you receive initiation from one teacher and you try to get the commentary instruction from another teachers and sometimes they can have a conflict. You know. Hmm? And because, you know, different teachers have slightly different lineage, different way of um, doing the practice slightly different sometimes, you know. So you receive the initiation from one teacher who have different, slightly different way of practicing. And then you get a commentary from another teacher who might, have, might not have exactly the same lineage. So they might have slightly different way of doing the practice. And so then 
then it doesn't kind of fit exactly, you know. And so it's much more better, you know, um, to receive uh, the same from if possible, you know. Um, and that is also one of the problems that many of the teachers find themselves. Someone has received initiate from another teachers and now they come and ask them questions related with that, but they can't decide on that, what, what that other teachers might have taught, what teacher might have, um, you know, uh, when they give, for what reason, why, all of that, you know. And also normally when you do the initiation, normally the teacher has to check whether the, whether the students are suitable for that initiation or not, you know. In the in the the traditional in the old time, you know, those initiations are given for a very small group. Most of the initiations, they don't have more than 25 people. Two people, three people, four people. Because it's supposed to analyze. The teacher has to analyze the students whether they are ready for it or not, whether they have the foundations or not whether they have developed all the foundation or not, because if they don't have foundation and if they rush, then it's instead of being helpful, it might not, it, it can have other effect. And so from the student point of view, also they analyze whether, whether the teacher is suitable for them or not, whether they are ready to take that commitments or not, uh, as in terms of guru disciple relation, all of that, you know, but you know now it is um, it has become a little bit different. And, um, so anyway, nowadays sometimes you find people who have not even been a Buddhist. The first introduction to initiations. You know, the first introductions is the initiations. There's initiation and there's no explanation, there's no requirement and they just go, oh, you know, they are going to get great blessings or it is going to, by, by taking initiation, they are going to be something very special with that kind of things they go and, and then they don't know what yet they are getting into. They don't know they are building up their relationship. They don't know they are taking the both set of vows, part of that ceremony, they don't know they are taking refuge, all of that. And, you know, um, so anyway, so once you take initiation, then by relying on that captain, that captain that was, you know, um, of the, the Guru Vasradhara, then you know, and through the practice, then we try to, you know, we try to cross the depth of the ocean of samsara, you know, by relying on that tantric practice in um, through the practice of tantra, in relying on that vasudhara um, guru to the state of vasudha fully enlightenment. And once you take the initiations, there are commitments, you know, there are commitments. The initiations come with commitments, you know. Depending on what kind of initiations, there are slightly different commitments, you know, whether it's a lower tantra or higher tantras, um, you know, and, um, and sometimes, even even when even when when they say there is no commitments, sometimes that sometimes they will give you a certain you know sadhanas to do you know certain practice sadhana do depends on the teachers. Sometimes they might ask you to do the long sadhana. Sometimes you might ask to do to the middle sadhana. Sometimes they might ask you to do to do short sadhana is okay. Sometimes they might ask you to do the mantras. Sometimes they might not even give a mantra, so it depends on individual teacher at that time. But still, 
still when we're taking the the initiation we have taking the the samaya and the 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 pledges you know um the commitment and the vows which are tantric um, the you know uh, what do you call um the five Buddha families' commitments like that, you know. Tamjichok, like Yedin commitment and like that, you know. Mm. So keep, once you take initiations, then keeping those commitment and vows are very crucial, very crucial. So that is what it's saying. I see your blessing that I may hold my vows and commitment, the root of the seed is dear in my life. So in order to have a spiritual accomplishment, CD here means spiritual accomplishment, you know, and there are many different levels of spiritual accomplishment, you know. The highest level of spiritual accomplishment is achieving fully enlightenment. And then, of course, there are many others, you know, kind of um, common others, spiritual accomplishment, you know, that can be helpful for your practice, that can be helpful to help and benefit others, you know. But to keep to be able to accomplish those city, the root of that is keeping those vows and commitments. If you don't keep those vows and commitment, then you know is clearly mentioned in many of the many of the tantric teachings that is not is not possible to accomplish those city if you don't keep those vows and commitment purely. And so, therefore, you have to keep them as pure as possible. And if you do break them, because due to our not being mindfulness, due to too much delusion, strong delusion, sometimes we might not be able to keep it, we might break it, then when you break it, we try to do purification and you try to renew as soon as possible. You try to purify and you try to renew it as possible. You can't just leave it, you know, um, without paying attention because, uh, you know, then we will create negative karma. So it, immediately we try to purify. Immediately we try to purify by applying the four, ended, um, four opening powers, we try to purify. And then, you know, if we have broken the root valves, then we try to, whenever we get opportunity, we try to renew them retake and renew them as quick as possible. And you know, according to some of the commentaries, you know, if you, they say you know, if you can keep those vows and commitment pure, you know, then you know, even you cannot achieve enlightenment in one lifetime, but it will be you will be able to achieve, you know, within the 16 lifetime. You know, at least that is according to the, some of the commentaries, explanations. You know, um, so that is mm, okay. And in terms of the Vajrayana or Tantra, you know, there are four different classes of them, you know, and again, you know, there's uh, the Tantra of um, Chagyu actions, and then there is the Tantra of performing, and then the Tantra of yoga, and then the Tantra of highest yoga, Tantra. You know, so there again, there are four classes, and again, there are, you know, supposedly gradual path. You know, first you you train in the practice of action perform, action tantra, and then you know, performing tantra, and then yoga and highest yoga tantra, you know. Um, but again, sometimes, you know, people just jump into the highest yoga tantra first time, you know. Mm. Because normally when you take the, you know, so it is a strong training if you follow that, because when you take, when you practice and the 
lower tantras, as an action of performing tantras, you know, even when you receive the initiation to practice those practices, you know, you don't have to take the tantric vows. You have to take, you know, to receive the, uh, the, the, the initiation part of that ceremony, you take refuge and, and bochida uh, vows, and then whatever other commitments and vows there. So, and then slowly as you, you walk with that, your both set of vows and that, then slowly, slowly, then when you're ready, then you take high yoga tantra. Then when you take high yoga tantra, then there's, there comes also tantric vows. So then there is a refuge vows, there is a um, both set of vows and refuge um, tantric vows. You, you have to take all of that in order to receive the initiations. So there's more commitments. And also most time there will be, a, you know, the practice of sadhana be given to do that um, when it's high shogatanda. So there are much more commitments. Um, so generally speaking, it's a much better to follow that, you know, gradual path, even in Tantra, you know. You train in that, and then slowly, slowly, as we get better, then you then you aim for the, the highest yoga Tantra ladder, you know, instead of again, jumping into it and immediately jumping into it. And also there are different, in terms of initiation, there are, you know, different initiation according to the lower tantra and the highest yoga tantra, you know. In the highest yoga tantra, there's more initiations, part of the ceremony, part of the initiations, you know, um, the four different kinds of initiations. In the lower tantra, there is the first initiations. There's no third, second, and fourth initiation part of that. So anyway, again, I think maybe, um, I might be giving too much uh, too much information. Also, there are differences between those um, four classes of initi um, tantra, you know, different from many different point of view. But I think I think maybe we want. Um, I don't think we need to go detail in that. And the main practice in the uh, lower tantra is you know, known as um, the yoga with sign and yoga without sign. And, and then high yoga tantra, then the main practice is generation stage and completion stage. So, so here, I think, uh, you know, here it, it explained about the high yoga tantra practice. It doesn't, uh, you know, explain the lower tantra practice. But like those who are interested, you know, there is a stages of Tantra by Lama Tsongkhapa, you know, just as there is a Lambrim, you know, the stages of the path on the Sutra, same way there is stages of the path on Tantra, as much like, you know, 400, 500 pages of them. So then in there, you will find all the details, uh, differences and detailed individual practice of those different Tantra. Hmm. So, but here is because it is, you know, it's just kind of summarizing. So here, next one, you know, 110, LC 110. I see your blessing that whatever appear may arise as a deity, having cleansed all the stain of ordinary appearance and grasping with the first stages yoga of transforming birth, death and parto in the three bodies of the conqueror. So here it is explaining about the, the, the practice of high yoga tantra, and as I mentioned, the, within the high yoga tantra, the, there's two main practice. One is what you call stages, um, the generation stage, you know, generation or developing stage, and then completion stage. So this one explain um, the generation stages, the path of the generation stage, and so in that is. Again, um, the main practice is, you know, 
transforming, you know, the ordinary impure grasping and the appearance, you know. Mm. And by transforming that, then, you know, instead of ordinary appearance, then we, we cultivate pure appearance. Instead of ordinary grasping, then we try to hold divine pride. So that is, and in order to transform the ordinary grasping, then you need to have wisdom realizing emptiness. If you don't have wisdom realizing emptiness, you cannot transform the grasping. And that is why we need to have the wisdom realizing emptiness as a foundation for the tantric practice to become effective. In all the tantric practice, we always start with, you know, transforming either yourself in the emptiness or the, the merit fields or all the environment, everything's in the, in, you know, becoming emptiness and from emptiness, then wisdom realizing emptiness appearing as that mandala, as that deity. If you don't have realization and emptiness, at the moment we are just visualizing. We are not really being able to do that. You are just visualizing. Visual, by visualizing, you cannot really destroy the grasping. In order to destroy the grasping, you need to have that wisdom realizing emptiness to destroy that. Otherwise, just visualizing is the wisdom. When you don't have really wisdom, you know, it doesn't have same effect. So you visualize as a deity, as a Buddha, but you are grasping to that Buddha as an inherent existence. So you still have a grasping. You didn't transform the grasping. You know? So that is why our practice in Tanda doesn't become so effective at the moment. As effective as it should be, as profound. It is supposed to be very profound. But it's not profound. Why? Why we are why is not becoming profound for us? Because we don't have the foundations, you know? Having real wisdom, realizing emptiness and visualizing having a wisdom, realizing emptiness is totally different, totally different. And so, that is where when you have walked on common path and you already have bodhicitta and you already have wisdom realizing emptiness. Now when you practice the thunder, now you don't, you actually have the wisdom realizing emptiness and that, you know, that transforming into the deity, the, the celestial man, um, the mandala, everything. And then when that happened, then, then that can transform the grasping, that, that can, you know, then you are not visualizing the deity as inherently, you know. So therefore you have, at the moment, you know, it's like, you know, instead of visualizing myself, myself because maybe I don't look so beautiful, then I visualize someone who is more beautiful than me. You know, still there is a grasping anyway. Still, there's a grasping to that image. The new image that I'm visualizing, still there's equal grasping, if not stronger grasping. Sometimes maybe we might have even a stronger grasping when visualized as a, uh, something perfect. Possible. You know, so, so that is why, you know, that is why, uh, no, no. I emphasize so much, you know, why we need to focus on the foundations. Without the foundations, you try to jump it and then the practice 
does not become so effective. You know, you don't have the same result that you should be having due to the lack of the foundations. And so that is what, so anyway, so that's, you know, whichever appearance may arise as this. So you transform yourself instead of ordinary yourself, you know, that is what appearance is, but then you transform and you visualize it as a deity, you know, not an ordinary beings, but enlightened beings, you know, and you will, all this appearance of the environment around us, which is ordinary, then we visualize and transform them into a mandala, you know, enlightened environment, you know, and all the sentient beings in that environment, instead of seeing them as ordinary beings, then again, we see them all as a daddy, all as a daddy, yourself as daddy, all the sentient beings in the planet, in the environment as an enlightened being daddy, the whole environment as not ordinary, but um, mandala, you know, so that is, that is daddy having cleansed all the stain of ordinary appearance. So that is that is ordinary appearance. So you are transformed ordinary appearance into something pure appearance. And the grasping is that, you know, so there's a grasping and there's appearance. And so then, you know, the grasping or inherently existence of that object. So then through realization or emptiness of yourself, through the realization and the emptiness of the, the environment itself, through the realization and the emptiness of the all the sentient beings that live in, through the understanding of emptiness of the all the activities and all the enjoyment. So then, you know, you transform the grasping. Now you have no more grasping to them, no more grasping of that, you know. Through that practice, then, you know, um, with the first stages of yoga, you know, so first stages, as I mentioned, the first stage is, is generation stage. Second stage is completion stage. So that is the first stages of the yoga. And through that practice, then you transform the birth, you know, and the dead and the part of into three bodies of the Buddhas, you know, three kayas. I guess maybe um, I have to. I guess I have to stop here today. Mm. Okay. Any any questions so far? Yes, my Barbara has a question. Please, please. Thank you, Geshe, for your teaching. Which teacher is qualified to give an initiation and an empowerment? I recall Venerable Rabina saying that she's not qualified, and I don't understand who who is a qualified teacher to do that. Uh huh. Well, you know, uh, sometimes not necessarily all qualified teachers will give that. Sometimes unqualified teachers will also give that. And sometimes there are a lot of qualifications. So it is, uh, you know, um, for example, you know, I will give some example. Gishi Soba, one of the greatest teachers. Um, he will be one of the most qualified to give initiations, but he never gave in his, he never gave initiations. You know, um, in terms of qualifications, he will be one of them because maybe, I don't know, maybe he might, he might have seen people are not ready, not ripening, and by giving him that, maybe it might be just creating more negative karma for everyone else. I don't know for whatever reasons, but he never gave. But in terms of qualification, you know, he will be one of the most qualified, you know. Um, he's the teacher of Lama Ishi, Lama Soba. He's the teacher of the present Gandhi Tibas, you know, so many other efforts in the monasteries, so many Tulgus, Rinpoches, all of them, you know. But, um, even, you know, my teachers now who is the present 
Gandhian Tiba, the leader of the Gandhian, um, Gandhian uh, he's the, the highest in the Geluk lineage, you know, and but even he, you know, he never, he didn't give initiation uh, earlier, even though he's qualified, even he was the effort of the Gumen Tantric College, you know, only later, you know, when he had certain position, certain responsibility, then, and when disciples started to request him, um, I remember even when like that, for example, you know, um, I requested him a couple of things, you know, I wanted to do a, you know, retreat on Cheresik Avalokishora because I felt like I need to own Bodhicitta and in order to work with Bodhicitta, the Buddha of Compassion, um, relying on Buddha of Compassion, um, Avalokishora will be beneficial. And so therefore, I don't remember whether I had the initiation when I was young or not. So I wanted to when I asked him, you know, and that was after, you know, I graduated at Geshe much, much later, you know, he accepted the gift. But when I said, can I invite others? He said, don't, don't tell anyone. Don't, don't promote, don't tell anyone, you know. And so he didn't want to give in a big groups, you know, um, and I had that experience with him, with a few others, also others as well. So it is, it is like that, you know, um, um, they are qualified, but, but they are reluctant to give. It's not that they are not qualified, but even when they are qualified, they are reluctant to give. And for same reason, I explained, because without having the good foundations, even you have all that, and even you do that, then, and their encouragement is to work on the foundation first, try to develop the bodhicitta, trying to develop the renunciation, trying to develop the wisdom realizing emptiness. That will be the, uh, you know, maybe that might have been better. You know, that is what they see. If you have all this foundation, then probably they would they would not have any hesitation to give the initiations because you have all the foundations. And now, uh, if you give initiation, if you walk in tantra, then it might be helpful and beneficial. But so I think maybe that might be one of the reasons, you know, um, they are hesitant, you know. And then we 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 also know others, you know, we have seen, you know, um, people who have titles of Rinpoche, Tulkus. And even at a very young age, you know, even when they are 10, 12 years, when even they don't know so much, of course, maybe if they are unmistaken too good, they have some from the past, but in terms of this life, they haven't had much, but still, you know, I've seen them giving initiation. So, um, so it doesn't mean they are more qualified than into some of the, those teachers, you know, um, so, it is a decisions, you know, in order to give initiations, as I mentioned before, there are certain requirements to be qualified to teach. One, give. One is you need to have received that initiation yourself from an authentic unbroken lineage. Then you need to do retreat on that initiations. You know, there's a requirement in retreat that you need to do requirement retreat. If you don't have, you have not done that required retreat, then you cannot give, even you have received initially yourself, you know, so you need to have those required retreat that you need to do um, in terms of the numbers. And, and sometimes you need to have the, also you need to have the permissions from your gurus, your teachers to give, you know, permissions, you have those requirements, you know, um, and so you you need to do those requirement retreat and all of that um, and then you need to know the ritual the ceremony well and you need to know the practice of that particular deity that you are giving initial so those those are the things that so if you have all of that then generally speaking you are qualified to give the initiations 
but many of the teachers will not give that, even they have those um, um, qualifications. As I mentioned, you know, this is Soba, and um, even one of my teachers, the abbot, you know, um, of the Sarachan Monastery, you know, um, and he, you know, he has so many students, you know, many, many great lamas, Rumboches, Tupus, you know, Chadu Rumboche was his disciples, uh, you know, um, Yang Se Rinpoche was his disciples, and um, Tundo Rinpoche, who is in His Holiness, uh, with His Holiness in His, uh, there are two Tundo Rinpoche, all of them. So there are many, many Rinpoches and Geshes, you know, many hundreds that he have students and that. But, you know, he was, he didn't give initiation much, you know. It's not because he's not qualified. You know, but he will rather want the disciple student to focus on the foundations than trying to trying to kind of you know reach somewhere without the good foundations. And so I guess that is the so so yeah, I don't know whether that that cautions um I don't know whether that that's, that answer your questions, Barbara. Did it questions? I don't think it's so clear. No, it seems a little bit complicated, but it was more of a question. I'm not at that point at all. This is all very new to me, but it was like, I was just curious mm -hmm. because I know Venerable Rapina said that she's not qualified. So then I didn't know, well, gosh, who is? Mm -hmm. But that did answer it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, I don't know when she says she's not qualified. You have to ask why she is not qualified. Either she don't have the initiation, or she didn't do the retreat. She don't have the um, the permit from that, or maybe she didn't want to, or she had all these requirement and she's qualified to, but she didn't want to do. You know, so it is a choice. The teacher make the choice. It's not about qualified or not. The teacher make the choice. For diff whatever reasons, you know. Um, and who was that? Um, oh, I, I heard uh, one of the again another teachers. You know, Gishidoga. Uh, he he is a teacher in a. Um, he's maybe in, you know, mid eighties, and again one of the great teachers, very um, great practitioners. You know. Um, great example as a practitioner, uh, you know. And again, when he, and he has been in Australia teaching there maybe maybe 30 years, more than 30 years. And again, his, his student asked him to give initiation and he didn't give, he hasn't given. And, and he mentioned to one of the, I think his translator, something, you know, he said, I can give you, I have the requirement to give all those qualifications required to give. But at the same time, he feel by giving them, he's not sure whether he's helping them or instead of creating cause and condition them to create more negative karma. Because maybe he feel they are not wrapping, you know, maybe they are not ready. So even from his side, maybe there is a is qualification, but he's not so sure, you know, by giving and by giving that, whether he's actually helping the student or maybe he's instead maybe creating cost to more negative karma, you know. So at least he has mentioned that to one uh, his student or decide, um, translate or something about like that. So again, he, he choose, he has qualification, but he choose not to give. And it's not like that he's not giving the Westerner and he's giving to the monks or Easterner, you know, he's not giving to anyone, you know, same with the Ishisopa, you know, it's not like, it's not like that he's feeling that Westerners are not ready 
or unqualified, whereas Eastern are qualified already, you know, it's just that, you know, most of the people uh, need to walk the foundations and we haven't have a good foundations. We still have, do not have that. And so therefore, I think that was one of the reason. Um, yeah. Okay. So I guess maybe we, yeah. If you have more questions, maybe next week, hopefully you can bring it next week. So we do the dedications. May all beings everywhere plagued by the suffering of body and the mind obtain an ocean of happiness and joy by virtues of my marriage. May no living creature suffer, commit evil or evil for ill. May no one be afraid to belittle with a mind weighed down by depressions. May the blind see forms and the deaf hear sound. May those whose bodies are worn with toil be restored and finding repose. May the naked find clothing, hungry find food. May the thirsty find water and delicious drink. May the poor find wealth, those weak with sorrow find joy. May the forlorn find hope, constant happiness and prosperity. May there be timely rains and bountiful harvest. May all medicine be effective and wholesome prayer bear fruit. May all who are sick and ill quickly be free from their elements, whatever disease they are in the world. May they never occur again. May the frightening cease to be afraid and those bound be free. May the powerless find power and may people think of benefiting each other. For as long as space remain, for as long as sense and being remain, until then may I too remain to dispel the miseries of the world. Okay, so again, thank you everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you.